Today we are living at a time as in the days of Noah. How can you tell? Listen and find out. In Matthew 24, verse 37, we read that the time of Christ's second coming has something to do with the days of Noah. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So, if we want to know if Jesus Christ is coming soon, we need to take a look at the time of Noah and compare it to today. The days of Noah are described in Genesis 6. It says, Now it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. These sons of God are angelic beings who wrongfully left the heavenly domain that God had assigned to them. Jude also wrote of these angels. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. These angels came to the earth at the time of Noah and intermingled with human women. God was very angry about this, so he limited the days of a man to 120 years and imprisoned the fallen angels for judgment. Then we read further that this abominable union between angel and mankind also brought forth children. There were giants on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God came in to the daughters of man and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. The union of the sons of God with women produced giants. The Hebrew word for giants is Nephilim, which means the fallen or the tyrants. They were neither angels nor human, but a kind of hybrid being. And this is exactly what Satan, being a fallen angel himself, wants to achieve. He wants to make man into another being of a different nature. He hates man, uh, who was created in the image of God. So he wants to destroy this image of God by making man into something similar to himself. The next verse says, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Because of the Nephilim and the wickedness of man, God brought his judgment upon the world at that time. And the flood came upon the whole earth and destroyed them all. But what does that have to do with us today? A lot because we are living at a time shortly before Christ's second coming. If Jesus is coming back soon, then there must also be Nephilim today, since that is how it was at Noah's time. And indeed, we can see before our eyes how the present-day Nephilim are emerging more and more. Firstly, we can see this in the public display of devil worship, especially among prominent people. They even boast of consorting with demonic powers and rituals. For example, actor Christian Bale publicly thanked Satan for inspiring him for his role in a movie. In an interview, actress Megan Fox also spoke about consuming blood for ritual purposes. See for yourself. Thank you to uh, Satan for giving me inspiration on how to play this role. It's just a few drops, but yes, we do consume each other's blood on occasion for ritual purposes only. <laughs> if actors publicly profess Satan and have received applause for it, Shouldn't we assume that the large company bosses, the super rich and high ranking politicians are involved with demons? Who promises man prestige, wealth and power? When Jesus was tempted by the devil, Matthew 4 verses 8 and 9 says, Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, 
All these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. No wonder the globalists want to rule the world. Whoever worships the devil will receive dominion and wealth in this world. The fact that the Nephilim of today also have to do with the rulers of this world is already evident in the meaning of the word Nephilim. Luther translated Nephilim as tyrants because they fell upon the people and oppressed them. Just in the last two to three years, we have seen how the rulers of many of the nations forced restrictions and intervened in the everyday life of the citizens. The time we live in today is truly like the days of Noah. The public display of devil worship is not the only proof of the existence of the modern Nephilim. Transhumanism also points to it. Transhumanism is an atheistic ideology that aims to increasingly fuse man with machine, to produce a being that overcomes the limits of natural humanity. For example, this German article reads, We will live forever, and that's a good thing. The founders of Google, Facebook, and Tesla are determined to overcome death. Scientists can now reverse the aging process in mice. They have the goal to do the same in humans. The Tesla CEO also speaks of this. With the help of synthetic RNA and DNA and the mRNA technology, the aging process in humans could be halted and even reversed. And through it, mankind could be transformed into a different being. And um, I, th I think there's going to be a lot of breakthroughs on the medical front, uh, particularly around synthetic uh, mRNA. Uh, you can basically do anything with uh, synthetic uh, RNA, DNA. Um, it's, really, it's like a computer program. So, I mean, I think with enough, with, with, uh, with effort, that's not too crazy. You could probably stop aging, reverse it if you want. Um, uh, these are, you can basically do it. You can turn someone into a freaking butterfly if you want with the right DNA sequence. Today, not only gene modifying technologies are already being used everywhere, but brain implants are also becoming increasingly important. Technology for brain implants. Elon Musk wants to get into your head. Would you have a hole drilled in your head to put electrodes in your brain? Elon Musk is working with Neuralink on just such a technology. Such implants are already being installed in the brains of monkey. The goal is to do this in humans as well, in order to create a being that is a hybrid of human and machine. The founder of the World Economic Forum also speaks of this. He wants a fusion of our physical, digital, and biological identities. His closest advisor even says that this second industrial revolution will no longer produce textiles and vehicles, but bodies and minds. See for yourself. What, what the fourth industrial revolution will lead to is a fusion of our physical, our digital, and our biological identities. What we're talking about now is like a second industrial revolution, but the product this time will not be textiles or machines or vehicles or even weapons. The product this time will be humans themselves. We are basically learning to produce bodies and minds. Bodies and minds are going to be, the, I think, the two main products of the next wave of all these uh, uh, changes. So we can see how natural human beings can be altered, transforming man into another sort of being. Aren't these the Nephilim of today? We are truly living in the days of Noah. But there is another side to the days of Noah. Let us read how Jesus describes the days of Noah. He says, For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So why did Jesus not mention the wickedness of that time at all? 
He does not mention a word about the Nephilim. Why does he instead talk about eating, drinking, and getting married, the normal things in life? Why? Because today it's not just about the wickedness of mankind and the Nephilim. There are also many decent people who live normal lives, which includes the Christians. They have nothing to do with devil worship and transhumanism. Rather, they have a good job, a family, a house, and like to go on vacation together. What's the problem with that? The problem is that these people are so caught up in the normal things of life that they don't even realize what is going on in this world today. They are so busy with all sorts of things that they are not at all interested in the world affairs, the Nephilim, and the signs of the times. All they care about is living their normal lives. In the end, they even downplay the wickedness of the world. Let us not be such people, because such people will not be spared from God's judgment either. The second coming of Jesus Christ is near and we have to prepare for it, just as Noah did when he built the ark. In the midst of this dark world, where the Nephilim are becoming more and more apparent, there is a glorious hope. Let us not forget that when the devil tried to tempt Jesus to worship him, Jesus answered victoriously, Away with you, Satan! For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Jesus Christ completely defeated the devil, the prince of this world, the fallen angels, and the demons. He himself says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus brings mankind back to his true calling and destiny, which is to worship the Lord his God and to serve him alone. While there is still time, repent and turn to Jesus. Believe in him, receive him as your savior, and follow him completely. Then you too can overcome the world. Because you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world.